It's long been rumoured that Union were going to bring out, Union were going to have another Jordan released this year. And the initial rumours that we heard, based on the description of the shoe, was that it was going to be another Jordan High. And at first we heard that it was going to be another Jordan High in the style um, and in the colourway kind of format of their kind of previous ones that did really well, which were the kind of um, black, blue, red ones. I forgot the flipping name of them. What's the flipping name of those black, blue, red ones that came out? Actually, I've got the list here. Let me see. The list here that originally came out, everyone was liking, which were, yeah, the Air Jordan High. So they got the black toe one and the blue ones, right? So people were basically thinking that there were going to be another sort of spin on this kind of, you know, what you would deem to be a classic shoe nowadays in this Union Air Jordan 1 with a black toe. So that was the initial kind of assumption people had in their heads based on just the description of the shoe. But then more details came out about the shoe and we heard it would potentially have a kind of a footscapey type of vibe to it. And being as a footscape is a real Marmite shoe in sneaker culture, people don't necessarily tend to like it. Somebody decided to put a, a mock-up together of what a Air Jordan High with a footscape detailing would look like. And it looked like this. Essentially, an Air Jordan High in white with the sort of fits footscape woven um, pattern on the outside kind of, you know, looking what you'd kind of expect from a regular footscape. And people were up in arms on social media. They did not like it in the slightest. They hated it, especially if you're somebody that was a fan of the classic Black Toe Jordan. Seeing something like this just didn't really sit with you in the slightest. It got so bad, Chris Gibbs, the founder and the head honcho over there at Union, had to come out and make a statement. And he writ this flipping wafty, vaguey, saying nothing without saying something flipping statement that made people even more angrier and made people more sure that this horrendous Jordan, you know, with the footscape flipping design on it will be coming out. The statement he released, um, courtesy of Complex, said as follows. It has been, um, sorry, it has been our company's stance to not comment on future projects until we're ready to start our marketing campaign around any particular launch. Although this stance has been extremely hard to keep at times, we are sticking to it. And it isn't half of the fun, and isn't half of the fun around any sneaker launch also tethered to the hunt now anyway. What would any self-respecting sneaker launch be without rumors of release dates and fan mock-ups and of what and of what they think is coming out or even better what they think we should have designed i can't take that away from us i won't needless to say i'm sorry but i can't make any comments that either or deny or confirm the current rumors swirling around about the potential 2023 union jordan collaboration other than say let the hunt begin which is obviously, you know, I'm a big fan of Chris Gibbs. I love what he's done at Union. He's a flipping OG for sure. He can definitely use that term OG, even though I think it's really corny and lamey and to kind of refer to yourself as an OG if you're over the age of 18, really kind of give your head a wobble. But he definitely has kind of earned that right. But this does come across a little bit self-absorbed, a little bit insufferable, a little bit pompous and just kind of screams why I kind of hate kind of speaking to anybody associated with the scene in the slightest. Like they really have an ego that's really, really crazy but regardless all of this to say after all of that flipping quotes after all those flipping statements and all this flipping conjecture the final product kind of leaked with these flipping sneaker leaker accounts which are essentially chinese factories that get them ahead of time so they can kind of make loads of fakes and kind of make loads of money off the back of them they finally did release a picture of what that union jordan footscape thing will look like and guess what it looks exactly like the mock-up the mock-up that someone put together, the actual official image of what these things will look like eventually, they look exactly like them. And if you don't see the picture here, you essentially have the same classic Jordan um, high design that they kind of featured on that kind of legendary black toe design that you got featured here with the kind of overstitched skirt design here on the front and whatnot. But essentially, the design is the same as the mock-up with the addition of the little footscape woven added onto the side of the shoe so whatever people floated out there about what it would look like they ended up looking the same so everybody that was hating the shoe has been justified in their hate because the shoes look exactly like things that people wouldn't like now me personally i'm a big fan of the footscape i've always loved the shoe maybe because of the generation of a sneakerhead that i am and the way they were introduced into the kind of you know space when i was kind of buying shoes i felt like footscapes were always kind of a bit of a luxury shoe they kind of felt like the you know what people would look like when they 
it kind of felt like the first thing you'd buy before you might buy a Visvim shoe or something a little bit more luxe than that, especially because they fell under the HTM banner, which at the time was um, a particular kind of branch, kind of exclusive luxury, really high quality shoes that were kind of made in conjunction between three people, Hiroshi Fujiwara, Tinker Hatfield and Mark Parker. And they kind of combined to make these really luxe and really kind of, you know, um, exclusive limited edition shoes, usually with really good materials not really crazy colorways but you know loads of tumbled leather loads of fur loads of pebble whatever it may be and it kind of really did well back in the day when i was buying shoes and one example of that footscape model is this classic which is the hideout shoe that i think came out in i think 2007 and i think i had a pair of the browns but i didn't get a pair of the whites but these footscapes um hideout collaborations came out in about 2007 very very popular a lot of people liked them at the time but again the shoe model is very marmite ish in terms of its appeal because of the kind of you know the way the laces are kind of bent on the side the woven pattern the way they kind of sit on your foot the fact that they, don't, they only work with certain type of pants and whatnot and just generally if you're a fan of jordan ones and this type of silhouette and you're that type of sneakerhead i can understand why footscapes are just not for you it makes complete sense but for me the hideout footscape was always really something that i kind of you know warm to especially in these two colorways i think they were absolutely boss and looked absolutely incredible especially from the side but I can imagine why people aren't really big fans of them so if you do see that final product of what they're gonna look like it makes sense why you're not gonna like them but I'm curious to see because Union Jordans overall I thought the same thing happened with the Jordan 4s when the Jordan 4s were initially linked leaked sorry I feel like a lot of people didn't essentially like them but I definitely do think the Jordan 4 unions are one of their stronger collaborations that they've done over the years. But when the images initially leaked, people didn't like them because guess what? They didn't look like the Jordan 1s. So I'm curious, will all this flipping kerfuffle online and people spitting their dummies out and crying and getting upset about the shoe not being to their liking and maybe not being as good as the previous collaborations, will it matter when they initially drop? Because are these going to end up selling out? Yes or no? I'm going to say yes. I'm st they're still going to sell out. They're still going to go for crazy amounts of StockX. People are going to be fighting over them. So everything think people are saying about the shoes and about what they don't like about them design-wise is going to be is going to be mute because essentially I feel like nowadays sneaker sneakerheads for the most part aren't really sneakerheads. They just buy limited edition shoes. They don't actually care about if a shoe. They're not actually interested if they like a shoe or not. They're most interested in is this shoe limited. Is it one of 100, one of 1,000, one of 10,000, 100,000? If that's the case, they'll buy it, no matter how ugly or how disastrous it may flipping look on their feet. They don't care. As long as it's limited, it means it's good to them. So all this flipping stuff people are saying online, I think once the shoes come out, people are going to change their sh tune especially if it comes out in a colorway they like if if union put together a colorway that maybe is similar to one of these jordan you know union jordan ones that they did before maybe it's a black toe maybe it's a red toe whatever it may be i guarantee you everybody that's crying online is going to purchase them because i don't think the woven design on the side is really that much of an issue that it would make somebody not buy the shoe flat out I don't think so personally. I think a lot of people will end up changing their tune and end up purchasing very, very soon. But I do like that people are kind of speaking about the design more online and kind of kicking up a fuss about what they don't like about it design wise. And, you know, maybe it's something that they would never wear. But I think once they initially do come out, everyone's tune will change because I've not seen, I can't think of a single limited edition shoe that people thought was ugly that sat around on the, on the flipping shelves. Even the Jordans that maybe took a lot longer to initially sell, right? The Jordan 4s, they still initially ended up selling out anyway. So this idea that they won't sell out is ludicrous because they're limited. They're going to sell out. And people, because they're whores and they're flipping sluts to the Jordan 1s and they have no real taste or no real personality and they're all flipping sheep and lemming, they're going to essentially go and buy them because they're limited and because they're unions just to come and stunt and kind of freak out on people online and stuff. That's what's going to happen. I can almost guarantee you that. But talking about union, this list also courtesy of Complex is pretty cool. It ranks all of the union Nike collaborations from best to worst. And there's some pretty horrendous ones like this one that I had no idea about, right? This union Nike Dunk Challenge Supreme in black legitimately horrendous it takes some of the tech challenge colorways and puts it on a dunk with a strap from a vandal horrible hate it same thing on this one with the white colorway ridiculously horrendous and then it starts to get into some interesting projects 
you got this Jordan Delta. I've not seen any other brand do another Jordan Delta again. So again, credit to Union for taking chances and going for models that not everybody's kind of going for. So credit to them for that. But that model is horrendous. Then it goes into a Jordan Zoom 92, which I think was very underrated. I actually did like this model and I thought the colorway was pretty sick. So I'm not that I'm not that mad of it. Um, this is the Guava Ice colorway. Number 17, you got the Union Nike Cortez in off in, in off noir, which again I think was a very good flip on I think a pretty un um underrepresented, underpraised model in the Cortez. It definitely doesn't get the love it definitely deserves, I feel like. Same goes for the Lemon Frost colorway in 16, and the Smoke Grey colorway in 15, and the Sesame colorway in 14. Then we've got the Union Jordans in D Desert Moss. Again, I feel like this was a definitely slept on um, colorway and collaboration in general. They did really well and they smashed these. And you can tell by the, the amount of times you see people actually wearing them in real life. I think that's a good sign in terms of how successful the shoes were. So I like those. Number 12, you've got the Ed Jordan 2 in Frog Grey. These are pretty cool also. But again, people don't like Jordan 2s because they're not 1s, they're not 4s. People just have this weird taste about them. For me, I feel that these KO um, Jordan 1 lows from Union are way too far up in the list. I personally hate and despise all Jordan lows. I feel like Jordan 1 lows just look like they're cheap up on the material. Look, They look like they've been cut with scissors and they just look horrendous. I feel like if I'm going to wear a low shoe in this type of silhouette, I just go for a dunk. Why go for a Jordan 1 low? It just feels horrible. So I'm not really a fan of those KOs at all. Um, and then again, you and again putting an all white colorway that high up on the list is also a bit weird. But hey, we continue. Then you've got ten. You've got another Jordan two collaboration with Union here. You got the rattan colorway, which again was pretty nice. But people don't like Jordan twos. And you got another one, number nine. You've got the top haze colorway of the Jordan fours, which was really good. You've got the number eight here. You've got the dunk lows. Um, you got the passport pack court purple which is really pretty crazy nice little lakers type of flip on there number seven you've got the passport pack pistachio colorway another really good colorway also number six you got the argon in the press passport pack and then number five of course you got the guavas which are definitely big in the number in jordan fours same thing goes for the off one jordans and then you've got the classic here the storm blue jordan ones and then you've also got the classic classic the one that he clerks pack from back in the day which probably go for bucks i'd reckon i'm assuming these probably go for thousands right now because these came out when i was still buying shoes back in the, the early 2000s so i'm assuming this must go for like oh yeah see 1000 these goes for 1000 these nike air force one 180s um these should be retro actually i'm surprised they haven't been retro anytime soon but they're definitely a shoe that should be retroed very fairly soon but they haven't been retroed in a while but these air force 180s at the moment are going for absolute bucks they say 242 pound but i absolutely doubt it in terms of that being the last sale let's just double check as the flipping thing loads here from flipping StockX. but i doubt it's going to be selling for that cheap it definitely has to be selling for way more than that um oh wow it actually is okay cool last sale is 242 but you can buy them for 100 1400 and 1746 in my size absolutely crazy the flipping 180 so they definitely deserve to be that far up on the list so big up them and of course number one on that list you then got the black toe jordan one so that makes complete sense to me i completely get it overall but like i said before i think everyone's going to change their tune once those flipping um footscape air jordan ones end up coming out everyone's going to change their tune everyone's going to want them and all that pompous nonsense people have been spewing about i don't want to buy them because nah you'll wear them trust me you're gonna wear them because they are what they are because they are what they are 